to be a guest at somebody else's podcast. And I thought, why not sharing the benefits of being a guest at somebody else's podcast? So let's jump in. The very first one is you get exposure into an audience that you wouldn't get exposure to otherwise. So, so think about this. You have your podcast, you share the information with your existing audience, and you try to grow organically. By bringing guests onto your show, or actually being a guest into somebody else's show, that is giving you that exposure into their audience. So I would strongly recommend that you start putting that on your to-do list, either to bring people onto your podcast or video podcast as a guest, or signing up and reaching out to other people to be a guest so you can get that additional exposure. So that was number one. Number two is once you have that exposure, once you have been in front of this additional audience, it's really taking the time to build that network, to build true engaging relationships. So now that that door has opened for you, now is your turn to network and build those relationships so they can become long time followers and then customers. And then last but not least is SEO and backlinking. So the way that I see it is whether you are bringing a guest to your podcast or you're participating in somebody else's podcast, by cross-pollinating, you are actually giving this other person the files so they can um, also share within their social media platforms or their website. Likewise, if you're a guest at their show, they are very likely to be sharing that episode within their Instagram, Facebook, their website, and also YouTube and iTunes and so on. So that automatically gives you, again, that exposure and those backlinks that you need to rank higher on SEO. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, hit to my DM and I'll be happy to hop on a call with you or answer any questions you have. But now I'm gonna jump in onto this call as a guest on somebody else's podcast and I will leave a few behind the scenes here for you. Ciao for now. So I'm here with Jesenia. We're about to hop on a call for her podcast. She invited me as a guest on her podcast and actually she's gonna turn it into a video podcast. <laughs> so, <laughs> Actually, I record all my video podcasts with Zoom. Believe it or not, Zoom is a platform because that way you can get the video and the audio and Zoom gives you both. But to me, that's a no brainer. Like why not do both? Yeah. <laughs> On the technology side of things, what are some best practices that you've seen that, that make the process a lot easier for somebody that's starting? Yeah. So the very first thing that I would say, I would recommend, strongly recommend, don't start with the technology. It's completely the opposite. Most people come to me like, what kind of mics should I use? What kind of this? But they're not really tackling the root cause that is making them kind of like be afraid to be in front of the camera. They're using those as excuses like, well, I need to find the best mic or I need to have the perfect light. Reality is that all those things, yes, they're important, but even more so, more important than that is in here. What is your mindset and how are you getting ready to be in front of that camera and in front of that mic? If you're actually thinking, well, but I'm not gonna sound good and I don't look so good on camera because those are the real stoppers. Those are the real show stoppers. If you're thinking that way, it doesn't matter what mic you have, it doesn't matter what camera you have, you're actually going to feel that fear every single time you're in front of the camera. So my recommendation is always start here, okay? And think about your audience. What is that message that you need to deliver to your audience and focus on that so the fear of being in front of the camera and having everything perfect actually moves away from your thoughts, right? And you start executing. And then that is when you need to start looking at, okay, what is the equipment that I need? And I wouldn't even look for very expensive equipment. If you're just starting, my recommendation is to start with what you have, your, your computer, your phone, your earphones, do not invest until you are 100% sure that you're going to commit. Because commitment to being consistent is extremely important. It's making sure that you're gonna show up 
whatever frequency cadence you decide, whether it's on a weekly basis, bi-weekly, you, you need to make sure that you stay consistent. Then here are a few very actionable, productive tips for you to get comfortable in front of the camera. So the very first one is people tend, if you're recording with your phone, tend to look at the phone itself as opposed to the camera. Okay, and then yep. your audience can actually feel it and see it, that your eyes are slightly off and they're not actually looking per se at the camera, which makes them feel that you're not looking at them. So the very first thing is make sure that whether it's your computer or your phone, you're looking at that little dot straight ahead, which is the camera, which you can think of as your audience. So another tip is, a lot of people are afraid just to talk to, even though if it's a little dot, even though if they don't think that there's anybody around watching, but they're like, I just have that fear. And I get it. I get it because I used to feel it. So here's how I overcame that. I took a picture of my best friend, okay? And I put it right on top of that camera. And whenever I was talking, I was pretending I was talking to her. So that is a really good, actionable, simple tip that will make you feel more comfortable when you're recording because you're gonna feel like you're talking to your best friend, not to an audience or a room full of people. So there you have it, two good tips just to get started.